Let's talk some hockey. There's 10 games tonight, and there's a couple doozies, a couple duds. I mean, you get 10 games going, two thirds of the league's playing, you're gonna get some duds. But there's some good ones in here too. We got Boston Islanders. I don't know if I love that. Pittsburgh, Washington, always great. Carolina, Tampa, always great. Dallas, Florida, those games have been all right. Chicago, Columbus, anything Chicago is fucking fun. Calgary, Ottawa, Flames, Wagon of the West. New Jersey, Buffalo, Nashville, Detroit, a couple duds. Montreal, Winnipeg, Montreal with the new coach, could be exciting. Edmonton, Vancouver. I mean, I fucking hate Edmonton, so fuck that game. But if you like hockey, you're probably going to like that game. So I don't love the Boston Islanders game. Any Islanders games, you know, they kind of were exciting for a little bit at the start of the year, but now they, they kind of gone back to boring, low event. It's just not exciting for me. I've watched a couple games. There's nothing that, stick, nothing that sticks out. Boston minus 132 here. Islanders plus 112. I mean, I don't see how that makes sense. I mean, Boston should be minus 160 at least. I, like, they're way better than the Islanders. This game's not close. I mean, it's hockey. Anybody can win any given game. But as far as these team goes, like, there's not, they're not as close as this line makes it look. So minus 132 for Boston? The goaltending they're getting? The scoring they're getting from their top guys? And the Islanders, what they're not getting from their guys? What In what world does this make sense? Minus 132 for Boston. I mean, come on. And we got one of the funner games of the night, Pittsburgh-Washington. It's a pick. These guys are going to play a bunch this year. I hope their games are a pick every time. There's a few ingredients to a great, great hockey game. A little rivalry action. They got it. Crosby-Ovechkin. Superstars. They got that, obviously. Crosby, Ovi, John Carlson, Backstrom, Kuznetsov, Gunsel. Malkin, Brian Rust, Zach Aston Reese. Tons of superstars on both sides. So you got that. Not the best defensive teams. I mean, they're not bad, but not the best. But really good offenses, really good lines. They're, they're, they Both these teams kind of started a little bit sluggish and they're kind of getting it together. Well, Pittsburgh at least anyway. Washington's been kind of chugging along. So what we're going to do to pick the game is I don't think we bet it. I think we take the over, because what do we got for an over here? Ooh, 6.5, that's dicey. 6.5, are you getting plus money? I mean, the over being 6.5 shows me that it is going to be an exciting game. It should be an exciting game. The goalie should let in a lot of goals. Ah, getting over 6.5, like that's a 4-2 hockey game. That's tough to get above that, but let's fucking do it anyhow. Plus money, over 6.5. I have no idea who's going to win. I'm not a fucking clue. I don't know what Washington kind of goofed their lines up last game. Kind of did the spread it out mentality. Like you've had Ovechkin for however many years now, and he's always had Backstrom or Kuznetsov as a center. And then you put Lars Eller there. What are you doing? Like he always plays with Backstrom or Kuz. Just let it happen. Let him finish his career with those guys. It doesn't make sense. So I don't love that. So that makes me kind of lean Pittsburgh. I don't know who's starting in net. I mean, the power play in Washington's fucking awesome right now, so I like that. This game's too hard for me to pick. I'll admit it. I am not good enough at picking hockey winners to pick this game. So I'm taking the over. Carolina Tampa Bay. So they played yesterday, early game for some reason. Tampa Bay won, 3 0. Man, Andre Vasilevsky is a good goalie. We've mentioned it before, but this guy is fucking good at hockey. It's not even fair. Like, Tampa has a stacked roster. They lose Kucherov. They get Stamkos back. I mean, sometimes they have guys missing, sometimes not. And then they always got fucking Vazzy at the end. And every once in a while, he throws up a stinker. But then when you look back throughout the year, I mean, he had a shutout last game, but he doesn't get a ton of shutouts. I think it was his first shutout of the year, but every game, one goal, one goal, one goal. Four goals, two goals, one goal, one goal, two goals. That's ridiculous. And with the offense Tampa has, all, they know they just got to put up two or three, and they got a good chance to win every single game. 
But they played yesterday, so I don't know if they're going to go back to Vazzy. So if they go to Vazzy, I like it. But if they go to McElhaney, you can't do it. And Carolina's not getting the goaltending. So I like Carolina in the fact that it's a rematch they played yesterday. Usually these guys are splitting games like that. So this is the fourth game of the series, I think, for them. Tampa's won the last two. So Carolina's due for the win. But they're probably going to be rolling out Reimer, the guy lets in pucks all the time. Tampa Bay can score. It depends on the goalie. So watch for the goalie news. And if you get McElhaney in and you're still seeing them hang a plus number on Carolina, run down the street to your local and take it. Next one, another rematch from a yesterday afternoon game. Dallas, Florida. Dallas won last game. I don't know how many shots that ended up being, but Florida outshot them like 45 to 25 or something in that range. And they lost. And they didn't score. And that's two games in a row where they just fucking pumped shots on Kudobin. And I imagine that guy is just gassed. He's got to be so tired. So we're going to get Ottinger in that. I can almost guarantee it. I'm assuming we're getting Bobrovsky in for Florida. So if you go goaltending matchup alone, I mean... That's pretty even, I'd say. Ottinger's, I mean, he's played better than Bob this year, so that's probably where you get the advantage. It appeared, I mean, Kudobin made some big saves. But when you get 47 shots and you don't get any goals, maybe 45, whatever the fuck they got, you're not getting the quality of shots that you need to be getting on net. You, j you just aren't. So yeah, they're getting lots of shots. But, I mean, if you get 50 easy shots, who fucking cares? So you can really go to Jake Ottinger in net if you're playing DraftKings. I mean, if you got into Kudobin, even when he lost, he still got a ton of points because he had like 39 saves. Then he had the 40-plus save shutout. I mean, these goalies are crushing against Florida, and I don't know if it's Kudobin who was playing that good because I didn't fully watch both games. I didn't even watch any of the second one. I was watching Carolina, Tampa. But if it's Florida just shooting the puck a ton and not getting a ton of high-quality chances, that's exactly what you want when you're picking a goalie. So I think Ottinger is a great play. And plus 117 for Dallas, I think that you have, if, especially if it's Bob for Florida, their worst goalie. I mean, Florida's proven us that they're not a bad hockey team, that they're pretty good. And Dallas is missing some guys, but they still won the game. They scored some goals, and guess what? When they go to bed tonight, they're not thinking about how they got pummeled in shots. Maybe the coaches, but the players, Klingberg, he's thinking about how he scored a goal. He's thinking that he finally got another goal after he going a little bit of time without one. Florida. They're thinking about how they gave up a golden chance to win a hockey game. So Dallas is going to have the confidence. They got the monkey off their back that they started scoring some goals for some guys. And yeah, Hintz was out. He's been kind of back and forth. But Dallas has got confidence now. They're playing against a worse goalie. They're winning the game. Plus 117 right now? Come on, smash that one. That's an easy bet. The next game, Chicago-Columbus. I don't even know who's starting a net for these teams. You told me at the start of the year I'd be wanting to watch these games. I'm telling you, you're a fucking insane person. But these games are awesome. Every game Chicago plays is a riot. And sometimes they go over, sometimes they go under, but it all depends on the goaltending. They're getting shots, and they're getting shelved with shots the other way. And last game, it was the Lion A show. Electric goal. Fucking awesome goal. Unreal camera shot. I don't know if you've seen it, but the one power play goal, the camera work was perfect. Amazing, uh, there's a gif on the internet of it, amazing goal. So Line has been, he's kind of getting getting heated up. He scores, and he's streaky. So you take a prop on Line to score. Play that a few games in a row once he scores, because when he gets goals, he gets them in bunches. And as for the game, I just think you take Chicago as a dog. I mean, I think the game should be a pick, and Chicago is a dog, so I'll bet Chicago. And even if they play Malcolm Subban in that, who at the start of the year I said was the worst goalie in the league. I mean, I've been wrong. He's been good this year. I don't know fucking how he does it, but he's been good. Don't know. Next game, Calgary, Ottawa. I don't know what's going on with Markstrom, but I do know, and he probably won't play regardless because he's played the last two games, including last night, so back to back. Big save, Dave. Fuck, I love this guy. And I said it many times. He sucks. I've watched him play for a couple years. He's bad. But when he gets in the zone and he gets hot, oh, baby, he gets good. 
And he went almost two games shutting these guys out in Toronto. Finally gave up a goal near the end of the game. They lost it in overtime. He gave up another one. So I think you got to get him out of the net now because he's let in a couple goals his last few minutes of ice time. So the goals are going to start flowing. So I don't know if they're going to play the Russian kid or if Mark Stone's going to be back. Either way, it's Ottawa. And the one thing, Calgary's record sucks so far this year. That's true. Haven't been playing great. Got spanked by the Oilers. I don't want to fucking talk about it. But they played a ton of games on the road. And they haven't got their kick at the can at Ottawa. Everyone else has got chances at Ottawa. Vancouver did. Winnipeg did. Edmonton definitely did. Toronto has. Montreal has. Even though they failed miserably playing Ottawa. But Calgary hasn't had that chance yet. So I can't truly judge this team, stack them up against the rest of the North, until they've had their games against Ottawa. they got a fuck ton coming up now. So maybe it's bad luck because Ottawa's starting to heat up and their goals are playing well. But you still got to beat Ottawa at least three out of every four games you play against them. So if they can do that, all of a sudden you're back in the conversation for a real good shot at a playoff spot. And that starts tomorrow, or tonight I guess, and you gotta win the fucking game. And the guys are starting to play well. You get confidence in your goalie. You can play a little better. And Riddick gave that to them the last couple games. And I don't know who's playing in net. But they gotta score some goals. And against Ottawa, with whoever they throw in net, you're scoring goals. So get some shots on net and get some goals. Calgary's winning this game. Minus 192. I mean, I'm gonna bet it. Because it's my boys. It's the Flames. Wagon of the West. But don't bet it. Minus 192. Do something else with your money. Next game, New Jersey-Buffalo. Boring. Not interested in talking about it. I don't know who's going to win. Plus money on Jersey, so I'll probably just go there, especially if they play Blackwood. I'm a little confused with what they did with the captaincy. Because Nico Heischer comes back from injury, young kid, and they slap the C on him. I mean, lots of young players get the C. That doesn't, I mean, that's no problem. But look at your roster. You know who else you got sitting right there? who's a couple years younger, Jack Hughes. In what world is Jack Hughes not your captain three years from now? So what are you doing slapping the C on a kid that's only two years older than him, and now in 10 years, five years, even three years, everyone's gonna look at this team and go, this is Jack Hughes' team. Why the fuck isn't this guy wearing the C? And it's because, well, we didn't have a captain. Nico was a couple years older, so we gave it to him doesn't make sense when you got that many young guys and that like it's clear that Jack Hughes is the leader of this team how do you not wait give it to one of the fucking old guys give it to Paul Mary and then when it's time give it to Jack because he's the guy that's going to be wearing it but now he's not now that guy's fucking riddled with an A like McKinnon in Colorado the guy's rocking an A for the rest of his career I don't know I just seemed just seemed weird to me what the fuck do I know though and then in Buffalo, now I'll talk about another coach's decision. This one made me fucking laugh. Like we said last time, he's whining. Oh, how can you sit Skinner? Play him on the first line. Skinner sucked for two years just because he's getting paid a ton. And the coach knows Skinner better than anybody on the internet. And then last game, Skinner's out. Who do they bring in? Some guy named Rasmus Asplund to replace him. And the fucking guy scores. And Buffalo wins the hockey game. So shut the fuck up about knowing more than the coach, about how you're better than this coach at figuring out hockey, because the guy he brought in for Skinner scored a goal, which Skinner's not doing. And you won the game, so shut up. And then Nashville, Detroit, another boring game. You can't bet Nashville minus 154, so either don't bet the game or bet Detroit. End of story. Done. Move on. Montreal, Winnipeg, Montreal fires Claude Julien. I mean... Three weeks ago, I was saying Montreal is the best hockey team of all time. But they got some issues. They don't score on the power play. They take a fuck ton of penalties. So they fired their special teams coach and they fired their head coach. Now, Montreal's been rolling lines, going three wide, four wide, all year. So maybe Mark Bergevin wants them to fucking stack up some lines, get some more offense. Because you got a guy like Phil Deneau, great player. I fucking love Phil Deneau. Playing with Toffoli and Gallagher. And those guys. I mean, they're controlling play. But their offensive centerman is Philip Deneau. In the defensive zone, that's awesome. He makes up for a lot of mistakes any other players make. But in the offensive zone, 
you're probably taking 15 points away per year from each of those guys because they don't have a centerman. So maybe you want to generate some offense. Maybe you're putting Suzuki up there. Maybe you're grooming Kotkaniemi to play up there. Maybe you move Deneau down somewhere else and put him on a checking line because he's a defensive guy. That's what he does. He's not a first-line center. He's a on a Stanley Cup winning team. He is your third-line anchor. He's like Michael Backlund in Calgary. If that guy's your second-line center and you got some problems with when he's on the third line, that's fucking awesome. So maybe that's what they do. The power play sucks. And you watch it, and you see these other power plays, other teams around the league. A lot of the trigger men, like Vancouver, they're moving across to Pedersen. They got Quinn Hughes who could pass and shoot. On Montreal, the one thing I've noticed with their power play, the defensemen are kind of the trigger men. And you need the defensemen to be able to pass a little more than what they are. It's like Kale McCarr in Colorado. He can set up Rantanen or McKinnon on either side for the one-timer. In Montreal, all they can do is set up Weber to clap it, and he misses the net half the time. Fuck, great player. Unreal shot. Great player. But for this era of hockey, a power play guy, you gotta be able to do more than shoot the puck. And if you shoot the puck that much, you gotta hit the net. And he's not the best passer in the world. And he doesn't have the accuracy. I mean, he misses the net with half of his one-timers. I mean, they're fucking hard when they hit the net. They usually go in. But it'll, like... You can, teams play for that. Because they know if Weber has the puck, he's not passing it. Like, he doesn't have a one-timer option to go to. Like, Suzuki on the sidewall, he's not ripping one-timers. I mean, you got Toffoli and Gallagher. Gallagher's sitting in front of the net. I mean, Toffoli, I think, makes sense as a one-timer guy. But the way the power play units are set up, it's not happening. So change that up. Get somebody who can dish the puck a little more at the top. Maybe Petri. I think he's got a little more potential than Weber for that. But mix your power play up a little bit. And against Winnipeg, you get some chances. Fuck, I haven't even talked about this game. Montreal minus 125, Winnipeg plus 105. As far as this night goes, you have to fucking hammer the fuck down on Montreal. You get a new coach, your team's revved up. They got gypped in the last game that they should have won. They're going to come out fucking flying. Montreal is winning this game and they're winning it by a shit ton of goals talk more about them later i'm excited to see what they do though then the last game fucking edmonton vancouver 3-1 vancouver 3-0 actually they go to a great start 3-0 in the first period edmonton gets one at the end of the first to keep it close nothing in the second third period comes and i got money on vancouver of course fuck edmonton one goal two goals all of a sudden, dry side out of nowhere has three points. And then they get a fucking bouncer goal that goes in. And Vancouver just, I mean, once you get, once you start losing and you get pucks going in your net, you kind of run out of steam. And that's what happened. Vancouver had no chance of getting back in the game. They kind of deflated. They had nothing going on. They're not a good hockey team. Edmonton, fuck this team, pisses me off so much. You got these two unreal players. Nothing else, but it's so often against these other shitty teams. It's enough. Just having those two guys is enough. And it fucking drives me mental because they're such a poor hockey team. But they have especially one, but two amazing players. And Connor, who's such a fucking ridiculously good hockey player. And he can win a game by himself. He honestly can. He does it all the time. Every time they win, he's winning the game by, them, by himself. And I mean, Vancouver's only plus 112. I don't even want to bet it. Fuck this game. Not betting it. All right. Favorite bets of the night. Boston plus 132. Pittsburgh, Washington over. Carolina, Tampa depends on the goalie. Dallas plus 117. Boom. Chicago, Columbus. I mean, if Lankanen's in, I feel better about it for Chicago, even though he got shelled a bit last game. Probably Chicago in that game. We'll see. Uh, Montreal. Hammer time. Big bet. So the three best bets of the night, for me anyhow, are going to be Boston, Dallas plus 117, and Montreal minus 125. Parlay those fuckers together, win some money. We'll hit you with the shot props on Twitter later. Follow me at Cease Pete's. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I try to put these videos out four or five times a week. Give it a like, give it a comment with your favorite play from the night, favorite bet. Good luck.